Okay, here's the answer to the cloning problem that I called tricky. Um, what we want to do is take a protein that's an anticoagulant, we call it herudin, and it comes from the organism herudo medicinalis, which is a eukaryotic analyte. The trick here is that we want to add a histine, histidine tag, and specifically we need to put it near the carboxyl terminus of this protein. So you can have a normal protein, that'd be herudin, and we'll have the methionine near the end terminus and we also want to put it into a vector that puts a whole bunch of histidine tags on the carboxyl terminus and these histidines have positive charge which allows us to kind of attract it in say a column that has some negatively charged um, uh, ions in it. Uh, the trick is to make sure that we glue these histidines on the end of the protein that we create. We call that a fusion protein. So we have two steps. Step one is uh, to answer several questions about this. The technique we want to use to isolate the hyrudin gene is called restriction digest. A restriction digest will use enzymes or restriction enzymes to cut the DNA and allow us to insert it into a vector which we also cut. The trickier part of this is that we want to create a fusion protein uh, that will allow us to have histidines at the end. Now this sounds tricky but because these restriction endonucleases cut very precisely uh, means you can actually line things up fairly simply. So let's first look at the Herudin uh, DNA. This is a piece of DNA that represents the non-template strand and remember that we just refer, um, substitute uracils in for thymines when we want to read it. Here you've got your start codon and then all the amino acids it would take to make um, the Herudin uh, protein but this is the genetic instructions. So the 5' prime end reading to the 3' prime end we've got sequence here and this map shows us where we would cut with the different restriction endonucleases. Here BAMH1 uh, is recognizable as a special site right here and there's that table in the worksheet and I'll refer to that in a little bit. We'll cut between these G's and create kind of a sticky end uh, that overlaps between this and the partner strand um, that isn't shown in this picture. The other one we want to cut is PST1 and you can see right here in red we're going to cut between these um, AG region and, and uh, its partner strand on the other side. And we can fuse those with a vector that's cut the same way. Notice that this overhanging region uh, right here in the BAM site and the overhanging region here in the PST site have different sequences so the uh, piece of DNA will go in in one direction. We won't um, mi mix and match the cut sites. Uh, the only I, I suppose very obvious part uh, of this map is that we've got a KPN site right in the middle and if we cut that it means we would sort of destroy our uh, protein. We would have too short a piece so we would avoid KPN uh, completely. Now here's the plasmid experiment A, PEXPA, and you can see we've got our histidine sites right here. We've got a BAM cut site there and a PST right there so looking at our Harudin gene, I'm going to make an arrow for the direction that we would read it. This would be the start, we'd have a methionine there and the end terminus would be there and the carboxyl terminus would be there. We want the histidines to appear after the carboxyl terminus but if you take a look here, the direction of the arrow would be from BAM to PST. Notice that our histidines are on the wrong side. They would occur near the N terminus and the C terminus would be here. So although we can clone the DNA it won't make the proper fusion protein so we would avoid this because it's in the wrong orientation. The PST uh, would, uh, is at the back and we need it to be next to where the histidine tags would be. Now let's take a look at the PEXPB plasmid and we can see it's got sites as well. We've got our PST site right there, we've got our BAM site right there and the PST, if we do the arrow again, the carboxyl end would be closest to PST. My arrow would insert in that direction. The PST leads into the histidine tags just like that. So this is a good one to use. Uh, histidine is shown in yellow. Our BAM H1 is shown in the plasmid uh, and green and you can see I've lined it up on the Herudin gene as well over here in this corner down there. 
And finally, we get our PST shown in red. It'd be at the end of that, and it'd be over here. So the go from green to red, green to red, it all seems to work fairly nicely. Here's a list of the cut sites for the Harudin, and you don't really need this to, to, to notice um, all the details. But remember that in the BAM H1, we're going to cut between the Gs. That's a little um, uh, uh, nick mark over here is indicating. And we cut between the Gs over here. You can see the same site there. And again, you can see the same site right there. And for the PST, shown in red, uh, PST will cut between the A and the G. You can see over here. And between the A and G over here. And between the A and the G over here. So we'd remove the 23 nucleotides and replace it with the complete Harudin gene. Now we have uh, step two. And we'd have to prove that we've actually uh, got the insertion we were looking for. We're told to use restriction mapping, and this is kind of like what you did in, in class, but uh, it's easier because we're going backwards. Well, remember that we would have replaced all of the DNA between BAM and PST with the Harudin gene. So we know we would lose 23 nucleotides between the BAM and the PST in the plasmid, so we'd be looking for a piece of DNA 2663 base pairs long. So here's a gel. There'd be a well in the, in the gel that would allow us to load the uh, DNA that we'd cut with the restriction in the nucleases. We'd run charge across to pull the DNA, which is negatively charged, and it'll move as a factor of its size. A big piece of 2663 nucleotides long would be there. Remember that the, the gene that we had in, in the... Um, Harudin would also uh, be uh, visible as well. I lost my gel. Let's do that real quick again. There's my box. There's my 2363 piece would be there. I'd have another piece of 194 nucleotides, and it would show up near the bottom like that, and that would verify that we have the pieces that we're looking for.